Hey friends. As you can see, I am not in my normal environment. Uh, and I do not have a piano. So I will not be playing any music today, unfortunately. I am up in Mesa Verde on a camping trip with my family. We got in late last night. I have not looked around, really. I've barely... I'm, I've, I came to this morning, and we're, it's cer we're certainly nestled into a beautiful little nook here. Um, and I'm excited to go out and explore some. But there's something that happens to me when I go camping. And, or at least... It's happening this time. I'm. It's. I, I. I recall this from previous times, but camping is. The, <laughs> it's. It's. It. You know. It's this deliberate issuing of comfort. Right. <clears throat> if you didn't want to be out in nature kind of living minimally, you wouldn't go camping. I mean, I'm looking around at some of these RVs, and it's like, they're not that minimal. Like, these, some folks just kind of take their house on the road with them. But, but, but our little trailer is not very big. It's a tiny little thing. And so, so there's this, and, I, and it's something, the reason why this step stands out to me as, as prominent or significant is that I resist it. I, I you know, I like my comforts. And it's really interesting. You know, I hear Sadhguru talk about comfort as being one of the primary enemies of consciousness. And nothing like a camping trip to kind of give yourself a little litmus test, see how you're doing in that department. Because almost immediately there are parts of me that, that rebel and that are wondering why we can't have access to this or that or, you know. And so I'm just monitoring that in myself and going, okay, what's, you know, wh what's that about? I mean, it's kind of obvious what it's about, but what's my real, what's really going on here? What am I really, because comfort, the reason why comfort is the enemy of consciousness is because it's covering over other things. In the absence of resistance to the moment we don't crave comfort and we, we're not addicted to comfort and there's no real problem with comfort in that in that context if, if, if we're actually um, fully present in every moment then then comfort is just another feature of the of the life that surrounds us of, of life in this moment but but if with if the withdrawal of comfort causes a problem psychologically or emotionally there's there's then we got to be wondering okay well, what's going on underneath here you know what's the what's actually there and i'm and i'm and i'm so i'm i'm on the lookout for that i'm kind of i i'm noticing i having noticed now this <laughs> this thing that happens to me when we when I kind of go off the grid like this um I'm going I'm 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 doing a bit of self-examination a bit of self-reflection going okay well what am I really what am I really what's really going on here um and the other thing is that that shows up as we sort of go out into the um, wilderness, is just a sense of 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 the um, of beauty of of being 
kind of wowed by this landscape. I mean, we, we live in a beautiful place, living in New Mexico, you know, even in, even in the city of Albuquerque, you're surrounded by a lot of beauty. If you can kind of get out of the strip mall city part of it. Um, and I've watched a couple of documentaries recently about treks through Tibet or China or just, you know, high altitude, um, kind of people who were really going off grid. They're not taking a trailer with them. And one of them, I, this is a movie, I forget what it's even called. It's a, it's a movie about tracking a um, snow leopard. And the and the the sort of main guy who's leading the trek is this French guy who does this all over the world, and he says, "I'm only I'm only my real self when I'm on these treks. When I go back to Paris, I'm a different per I'm a different human being." And I get a little inkling of that as we step out into as we as I step out of comfort. I get a little inkling of something else showing up, a part of me that's deeper, that's actually much more real. And that doesn't actually require comfort to be alive. You know, I think I spend a fair amount of my time, you know, my focus in life, and in, in, in much of my time tends to be on the creative process, on music, teaching music, interacting with musicians, my own musical practice. There's a fair amount of my life that's spent that way. And, and, that, and there's a, there is a kind of prerequisite of comfort, or at least, I wouldn't call it comfort. I would call it just enough, enough of... <laughs> enough of a civilized situation that, you know, you're not distracted while you're trying to play a piano. But this, but there's a, but there's a part of me that's not as active. You know, the part of me that comes out when I go out into the sticks like this. Um, and it's kind of fun to feel that part of me wake up and and remember that that presence consciousness wakefulness happens on happens on all levels it's not just you know it's not just in the creative work or musical work that that happens there's a, there's a there's a kind of connection with the with the planet with the forces of nature that as soon as I get over the resistance really enlivens me so that's kind of where I'm at today I'll probably have a I'll probably have some spectacular news to report after we spend a day out here we got in so late that we couldn't even see anything, but, but today's our day. So yeah, thanks for watching folks. Thanks for tuning in. Maybe I'll do a second video today and kind of show you around Mesa Verde a little bit, but I appreciate you. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.